So I figure I'll give you some quick context before I talk uh, specifically about uh, the Internet of Things and then some of the devices that we've been making and some of the things we're excited about. Um, so I'll start way back. Started as a, a programmer when I was nine, a designer in my teens. Uh, physical production, content creation, marketing, turns out to be, I think, one of the most interesting combinations for building uh, Internet of Things that uh, help big companies and small companies do really new, interesting things with regard to engaging their customers and communities. Um, so I Strategy Labs is about 40 people now. Started it uh, six years ago in my apartment in Logan Circle. We're all in DuPont Circle. And over the course of time, we built up this capability where we can rapidly prototype new internet connected devices um, that hopefully give people a little bit of joy. Um, I hope in the future we create things that literally save lives and save the world. Uh, but right now, I feel like we're just little tinkerers. So I'll talk a little bit about some of those things we've been tinkering with that we think are interesting. Um, I'll start with the first one we ever built. This is probably, wow, two and a half, three years ago now. Uh, this is how our whole practice area started. And I said to one of our engineers, um, hey, if I give you 500 bucks in two weeks, can you figure out how to unlock a locked box with a Foursquare check-in? Right? So we brought it back, took, found one of those little black cash boxes you use for bake sales you know, or a church collection or whatever. And when you checked in, a light went from red to green. And is the mic not working? Uh, went from red to green. Uh, and the box, would, the little key would turn, the box would unlock. And, uh, you can get the, we had loose change inside. So big prize, right? Big prize inside. Uh, fast forward, we then hacked a cooler. We took a Coleman cooler, uh, put a little hydraulic lift, little lid thing inside, uh, backlit LEDs, some fake ice so that we wouldn't damage our, our circuit boards. And it took five friends to unlock, right? So now you're getting to the point of, like, how do you do collective action? How do you get people together to do something special in the real world to unlock some kind of incentive, some kind of entertainment for themselves? Uh, we showed our good uh, clients at GE this, and they said, oh my god, can you, can you hack a fridge? What can you do with a fridge? Right? And so we took a 72-year-old antique GE fridge that we found on eBay, shipped it to Austin, Texas for South by Southwest. I'm assuming a few of you are heading to South by Southwest next week. Um, and we, we put a bunch of engineers literally in a garage outside of Austin, Texas, while they installed a microcontroller in the door, an actuator to pop the handle open. Absolutely. And then we put this thing in something called GE Garages, where hundreds of people come every day just to experience laser cutting for the first time and 3D printing, uh, all of that maker stuff that's so interesting and important and is going to continue to grow. So what we found was it took 10 four square check ins to unlock the fridge to get the free beer and soda inside. Now, every, free beer is the, the best marketing promotion on the planet still. Like those two <laughs> words combined will drive more traffic to any physical location on the planet. Just say free beer and you're cool. Um, what we found was, you know, when there's you know, a lot of traffic, a lot of people around, uh, it was easy. You know, left and right, this thing is popping open. It's really cool. We had a real-time data visualization off the left-hand side that would show like that counter, right? One, two, three, four, ten, <laughs> winning sequence. Beer is Pabst and Dr. Pepper on the screen, like all over the place. Great. And when there was low traffic, you know, there'd be like three or four people check in. They see the, t the tickers at four, and you know, people would literally just hang out. Be like, oh man, hey, do you use Foursquare? You do? Oh, can you come over here and just like check into this fridge <laughs> for me, <laughs> right? And so people are pulling people into the experience because we architected this to be a collaborative experience, right? Using social technology, using hardware. And I think that that those two things alone, social technology and hardware. That combination is, it's not the future, it's literally right now, right? So I could list, and I, maybe I will, like a dozen projects that we have used that combination to do exciting things. Um, oh, so the next one I'll actually share. Uh, for Nickelodeon, uh, they have SpongeBob, right? How many people are SpongeBob fans in the room? That's about right, it's about a third of you. Uh, the, average, the average age is 34 of a SpongeBob fan, right? So how do you create an experience that lots of kids and lots of older people would love. Adults, I'm sorry. Lots of adults would love. Uh, so we thought, so this goes back to like just pure uh, anthropological understanding of what people will, will like. And that's, to a certain extent, marketing. So we said, everyone remembers the boardwalk, hopefully, or at least an arcade, if you didn't live near the beach. 
none of us ever won that skill crane game. None of us ever could grab a prize out of that damn box and win a stuffed animal. Have any of you? Has anyone in this room ever won a prize? You did? This man. <laughs> Th three of you? All right. Was it through the SpongeBob game that we built? OK. Anyway, so we said no one has ever won this, except for these three people in the room who are superhumans. Uh, <laughs> let's give people the opportunity to finally do that. Right? So the, adult, the adults will remember it. The kids will just love it. So we built a freestanding internet connected internet skill crane that we installed on their Facebook page through a live stream so that you could pipe into it to try and grab the bubbles in the box to win a SpongeBob prize that gets redeemed through Amazon, right? So how do you architect an application, a campaign, so that hundreds of thousands of people can vie for control of one physical device that was in, in the workshop, specifically in DuPont Circle, in a closet with the lights out lit perfectly so you could only see in that little box. And then it traveled and went to Universal Studios and all the rest. That kind of stuff is going to happen more and more. I think we're probably among like a half a dozen shops on the planet doing this kind of stuff. And it'll probably become a commodity in three years. Fine. That's fine. Five years from now, you're going to be walking around affecting the real world with your supercomputer that you have in your pocket that right now all it does is tweet. But later, it'll do a lot more. You're going to be able to control all of the things around you. If this room collectively thought these lights were too, too high, you'd have an application on your phone already and you'd tune it down. And it would actually tune down based on the average input from everyone in the room, so you'd have collectively the right lighting, right? So that's all possible. Uh, what else can I tell you about the Internet of Things? Um, I think that home automation is the thing that most people generally think about. Um, so I've been talking a lot about the marketing context and the human interaction context, because that's the kind of work that we do and that we're excited about. But most people think about home automation. Um, that's crucial, and there happens to be a really strong company called Smart Things based right here in Georgetown that's doing that kind of work. So if you're interested in this, check out smartthings.com. You can basically buy what's essentially a Wi-Fi router. It seems like a Wi-Fi router. It's a little box, and they have all these little accessories that come with it. There's a simple little magnet-based uh, switch. So I could put it in my liquor cabinet. Let's say I had kids, and any time that door opens, I get a text. Johnny's in the liquor cabinet again. <laughs> hey, son, you're grounded. What did I do, Dad? You know what you did. Here it is, right? Because Jim looks like a liquor drinker. No. Um, so that space is growing rapidly. It's a huge business. Um, I would assume most of you in the next five years or so will have at least one internet-connected device in your home. Some of you will be super geeky, super early adopters, and totally automate everything about your home that you do. Your home will be able to detect, and already can, I'm with smart things. Uh, if, if you're within a mile of your home, does it turn on the heater finally so that it starts to warm up by the time you walk in the door at 72 degrees instead of 66, which happens with me, not a big deal. But, you know, let's get our creature comforts and we can figure out our own, our own algorithms.